So let's just continue from where we left off uh, in the last video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create these three columns. I'm just going to create these three columns. So let's call these as column column one. Let's call this column two. And let's call this column three. And what these columns are actually going to do is I'm just going to double check that my loop invent holds at these specific points in my code to and make just 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 to just to show you that this loop comes to a termination and that the loop invent does not get violated at any of those points in my code there. Okay, and let's start with n equals to 3. Okay, if n equals to 3, what is the value of m, n, and result at, at this one? So at, at 1, at 1, I know that uh, uh, at the very first time, um, in this case, n is, n is equal to 3. Okay, n is equal to 3 as there. Okay, n hasn't changed, so I mean n is still 3 at this point. What is m going to be? m is going to be 3. Okay, and at that point one, what is the result? Result at that point is actually equal to one. What's my loop in rent? My loop in rent is n factorial equals to m factorial times result. What is n factorial? n factorial is three, three factorial. Okay, this three factorial, which is six in this case, let me just use it this way. This n factorial, which is six, equals to m factorial, which is three factorial again, times result. Result in this case is one. Okay, so 6 equals to 6, meaning this is valid, meaning everything's okay at point 1 here. Okay, this is good. What is at point 2 here? At point 2, I still have n equals to 3, I still have n equals to 3, I still have m equals to 3, my result is still 1, my result is still 1, and I still have 6 equals to 6 times 1, meaning I still have 6 uh, equals to 6, meaning everything's still okay at point, at point 2 as well. Now, Remember, anything could happen inside this orange box. The loop invariant inside the orange box could be violated, but that's okay. I have these three specific points that needs to ensure that my loop invariant doesn't get violated on these three points here. Inside the body, what I'm doing now is result equals to result times m. If result was originally one, okay, result was one, so one times m, meaning result one times three is three, result becomes three at this point, m has decremented by 1, meaning m has become 2, m has become 2, what are, what's my, what is it at point 3, just after the body, just after the body at point 3, what I have now is n is still 3, n hasn't changed anywhere in my code, my m has become 2, my result, my result at this point, my result at this point is 3, okay, what's my loop invent? n factorial equals to m factorial times result. n factorial is 6 equals to m factorial which is 2, two factorial now. So this is going to be 2 factorial which is just 2. So instead of just saying 2 factorial, this is like 2 there times result and result is in this case uh, result is right now 3 meaning result is 3. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 equals to 6 meaning everything is still okay at point 3 as well. Okay, so what happens now? After point three, I've just ensured everything is still okay on point three. The loop, uh, the, the 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 loop is about to begin a second iteration. At which point I check whether m is m is still greater than zero. What is m now? M at this point is two. Two greater than zero is true. Okay. So what is it? What is it at point two now? Well, at point two is exactly going to be still at this point. I have n equals to three. M is now two. Result is 3. I'm just copying everything from this point, right? Nothing has changed from moving from 3 over to 2 here. Okay, so result at this point is going to be 3. And what I have now is 6 equals to 6 equals to 2 times 2 times 3, meaning everything is still okay at point 2. My loop invent doesn't get doesn't get violated at point 2. Now what is result equal to result times m? Okay, so m at this point was 2, m was 2, and uh, result the result is uh, 3, 3 times 2 is 6. The result has become 6. Okay, the result has become 6 now. And what has happened to m? m has decremented by 1, meaning m has actually become equal to 1. Okay, so what is what are my new set of values? At just at this point 3. At point 3, what I have is n is still 3. m at this point is 1. Okay, the result at this point is 6. Okay, and what does my loop in red? Tell me, loop in is n factorial equals to n factorial times the result. n factorial is actually 6, okay, because n hasn't changed. 
equals to m factorial. m factorial is 1, meaning this has this is going to be equal to 1 factorial, which is equal to 1, times result. Result is 6. Okay, so what I have here is 6 times 1 equals to 6, meaning everything is okay at point 3. Point 3 is completely fine as well. Okay, if everything is okay at point 3, okay, so if I, if I, if my, if my loop begins again, okay, if my loop begins its next iteration, my condition is n should be create n should be greater than or greater greater than zero. What is m now? M at this point is actually equal to one. If m is equal to one, everything at point two does my loop invent hold at point two. Well, loop invent holds at point two because it is still going to be still going to be. Uh, I'm just going to copy everything from point three over to point two. So m is going to be equal to one. Result is going to be equal to six. And what I have now here is six equals to six equals to one times six. And we know that this does not violate my loop invariant. Loop invariant is being completely hold even at point two. Let's just go further in this uh, in this uh, in this in this code here. Now what I have here is result times m. Okay, what is m now? M is actually one. What is result? Result is six. Six times one is going to be six. What is m going to be equal to now? Well, m minus minus so m has become zero. M has become zero at this point. Okay. If m has become zero, if m has become zero here, let's just go back to let's just go back to point uh, uh, point three here. At which point, uh, uh, if it has become equal to zero, and if I see m as being equal to zero, let's see what is it at at three here. If I look at point if I look at point three now, at point three, what I have is uh, n equals to three. N hasn't changed. My m is at this point is equal to zero. Okay, m is equal to zero. My result at this point is actually six. Okay, and what does my loop invariant tell me? My loop invariant is n factorial equals to m factorial times the result. What is what is zero factorial? Zero factorial, right there. Zero factorial is something that's equal to one. If zero factorial is equal to one, what I have here is this piece, which was earlier one factorial, is now zero factor, which is still one, one times Result six is still six, meaning my loop invariant hasn't been violated yet. It's still excellent, it's still it's still holding. My loop invariant still holds. Okay, everything is still okay at point three. My start of the next iteration, my condition at this point gets gets violated. The boolean condition, meaning my loop has terminated. My my condition in the loop here is m should be greater than zero. What is m now? m at this point is 0. 0 greater than 0 is false, meaning the loop has terminated. If the loop has terminated, I'm just about to execute the return statement, okay? If I'm just about to execute the return statement, if if, if you may, I can even create this, this, this fourth point, which is just before the return statement, just before the return statement. Let's create this fourth point here. This fourth point is just before the return statement, meaning just after the loop has has terminated. Okay, just after the loop has terminated. If I would like to, this is also one other point that the loop invariant must hold. I know that loop invariant holds at point four because at point four my n is still three, my n at this point is zero, my result is six, and my loop invariant is six equals to zero factorial times six, meaning everything is okay even at this point four. Meaning, what is it that needs to be done at this point? Just return, just return back whatever is result. What is result? Result is six. And as we, as I said earlier, that result is going to contain whatever is n factorial. So if n was three, if n was three, result now contains six, which is actually n factorial.